Hey, T for me and you, welcome on Instagram and hello, YouTube people. YouTube people. <laughs> is that good? Perfect. All right. Oh, I got my wrong hey guys, glasses. Hey, welcome back fun. to today's uh, Sunday tea book. Yes, welcome back. We are back with episode five of uh, our Sunday tea book series. And uh -huh. um, I don't know how long I can keep track of the episode numbers. I know five isn't a big number, but it's just a way I roll. <laughs> And we are working on our um, our China Tea Book. So Sunday Tea Book is a series that you guys inspired um, back a while ago. Somebody suggested that we do some translations, and it kind of morphed into this idea: Sunday Tea Book. What do we do? We dive into Chinese books, articles, and papers that are either not translated, or the translation is um, a little bit sketchy or hard to understand. And um, we do a live translation of them with you guys here. So what does that mean? It means that uh, you guys get to participate in that and not only um, get a good translation, but also get a little bit behind the curtain of Chinese tea and tea culture. Because a lot of the translation, we have to look at those, those Chinese expressions and words and it takes quite a bit of work to get them into English. And that work is actually really useful uh, for you guys in terms of your Chinese tea and tea culture understanding. So I think it's a super exciting way to dive into and really get behind the curtain of Chinese tea. Don't hesitate as we go through the session to chip in with your questions and your comments. Um, but for those of you on Instagram, you'll have to flip over to YouTube to do that because we actually pull, we're going to pull the book up on the screen later. Can't do that on Instagram. So if you're on Instagram and you want to follow along and check this out, jump over to our YouTube channel. And uh, you'll find, I think the link's still up in the description. It'll kind of get you there. It'll get you at least to YouTube. Um, if you not, can Google us Just too. Google Gen yeah. T YouTube. If you'll you find, find us. That. Yeah, <laughs> you'll find that. So don't hesitate to ask questions, but try to make them as complete as possible because I'm going to read a whole, you're going to see the format. You're going to need to do that. So that's about, uh, that's what Sunday Tea Book is all about. Mm -hmm. And we're today we're going to continue on this uh, China Tea Book written by Jian Li Wu, which which Jen's I mean, mom. <laughs> is my mom and our tea and, consultant. Uh, today we're gonna dive into a chapter a little bit about uh, oh. how to choose tea and the look of it and mm -hmm. uh, Real appraisal, really appraisal the, the good bit. meat and I'm potatoes for your tea nerds are gonna this. love this. Mm. Mm -hmm. Right on. So and uh, in, so for and for those of you who are new, the format's going to go like this. Uh, this book that we're doing, China Tea, is already translated, but it's one of those cases where the translation um, leaves a little bit to be desired. So I'm going to read directly out of it, and then you can follow along on the screen. I'll read a section, and then um, I'm going to. I've already read through it, and I've written down all my questions and stuff. That as an English speaker, and I don't read Mandarin or speak Mandarin, so I can't cheat and go over and look at the Mandarin text, which is also in the book. I'm going to bring up my questions and what was confusing to me, and that's where you're going to have a chance to also pipe in. And if I don't cover something, you can say, "Oh, I found this confusing too." Definitely do that. And if there was anything on the Chinese side, Jen's already read that. And if there's something completely missed, she's going to make sure we get all the, all the meat, all the sauce out of this book. All right. So, and even better, after we're done the video, down in the description, we're going to post a link to our finished translation. So we're also retranslating the book and posting that up on our website. So be sure to check that out. Now, if you haven't subscribed to our channel and clicked the <laughs> notify button, definitely do that. So you'll know yes. whenever we go live with these sessions or other videos about Chinese tea and tea culture, tea travel, etc. The whole enchilada. <laughs> yes. And today we will be brewing some yellow tea. Uh, da ye qing. Mm. Okay, and um, we have been travel, not quite a travel everywhere, but we have been brewing outdoors and stuff using our travel kit. Mm. And uh, this is for sale on our website, so I'm just thinking it's good to demonstrate how yeah. we use that daily. Yeah, and um, actually, although this has been a really low travel year, as you can all appreciate, you can find some woods. We do travel, <laughs> yeah, no, and we do travel all over. When we go on tea trips, I was always amazed, especially in early times, to see everywhere we go, Jen Li will whip out a little travel set. We're in a train station, we're in a plane, we're on a plane or in a bus or whatever. We're brewing tea all the time. So these sets are really great if you want to have some tea on the go. Mm. Um, yeah. So anyway, so Instagram folks, we're gonna close down the Instagram stream. Hop on over to YouTube to check out the uh, to check out the video, and uh, we'll catch you later. YouTube guys, hang on while I do a little bit of Instagram administration. Bye bye.
Bye bye. Awesome. Okay, we'll pop that over. Here. Oh, hi, Cindy. Good to see you too. It's actually pouring rain outside right now. I just love watching the rain drop down the eaves. Yeah, it's a really uh, nice day for the garden. Okay, that's posted and I'm going to put down the phone and get back to work here. All right. So what do we want? We want this and this. And I'm going to switch us over to the book, guys. We're going to get started very shortly. We'll spend a minute and maybe see what you guys are brewing. Mm -hmm. uh, let us know. Hey, Cindy, welcome to the stream. And uh, so everybody out there, let us know what you're brewing. Like Jen said, we've got uh, Da Yu Tsing. Uh, an intriguing yellow tea and in our last spur of the moment live jen mentioned that this could also be called right um huang da cha. Uh, huang da cha, but that's going to be a whole different video so i'm super excited to hear that so definitely uh keep your eye on us for that uh, reveal because i don't even know i'm going to do a little research though and see if i can find out but uh honestly i'm, I'm not too hopeful i'm not a great researcher <laughs> hot and sunny in sacramento yes oh, lovely nice. sacramento all right, and uh, all right, so I think I can start with section one. Yeah, Can you one. get brewing? Let's get rolling. Yeah. So I'll pull up the book, guys, and we will get rocking and rolling here. Just give me a few minutes to do some, some tech fun. Here we go. So we've got the book up. We're going to shrink, shrink into the small screen, and here we go. So as we said, it's China tea. Last time, last episode, I didn't have my highlighter, but I got my highlighter back, so you better watch out. So we're in uh, part two now, really juicy, fun, meat and potatoes, tea appraisal, tea understanding, and we're gonna cover today uh, this section right here. So uh, appreciating tea as an expert. So that sort of area. It didn't straighten you this time. No, because I, I started here and curve way down. Uh. But I, give up. Th I think it will. Yeah, if it's too much, I think okay. it might. Anyway, so, <laughs> so here we go. So step one uh, on the side there, it's written vertically. Step one, selecting tea. I got to scroll a bit and read. Preparing, <gasps> preparing tea sets and choosing water. Okay, so that's the section. And uh, we won't be, Jen has taken care of the Chinese text for us. So we'll head right down to the English text and get started. Mm -hmm. Look. Somebody is in Argentina. Peichen Tea Palace, brewing Gushu Dian Hom from Yunnan. Gushu Dian Hom. Interesting. Ah. So, um, ancient tree black tea from Yunnan here in Buenos Aires, Argentina. Welcome to the stream. It's so great to have people from all over the world. Right? I really feel Are like. Are we in the same time zone? Uh, they're an hour or two before. Argentina. Argentina is. Uh, that's Chile, I'm thinking. Yeah, I think we might be. Argentina is due south of Brazil. Is my geography awful? I think I've got that ish, right? Like south and a little bit west. Anyway, you can let us Ooh. know. Huh, man? A, yeah. See my steamy glasses? <laughs> That's a hazard of being a tea appraisal person or a tea lover, I guess, not just a tea appraisal person. What a weird term. <laughs> All right, so you see how handy this travel set is? It just pops out like that. Mm, what is the aroma though? It's definitely got that yellow. It has that sweet corn aroma. Yeah, yeah, nice one. When I'm brewing that, that's why you I You know, it's in the glutinous do. corn zone, though. Sweet, glutinous? Yeah, more like sweet glutinous corn, the kind that you like and the kind that I don't like as much. Hey, <laughs> he calls it that I, gross corn. I hate it. I hate it. But it's, it, has that, it has that thicker aroma than a peaches and cream western style corn. Oh, this is really sweet. This mm. is literally sweet, not just a sweet sensation. It's like a... Not brown sugar, but not brown sugar. It's almost like a syrupy. Mm. Mm. That to me is a pretty oh, syrup. That's really refreshing. Oh, I can't get off the corn though. I still taste that corn sweetness in it. All right. That's syrupy for me. Mm. Okay, let's get started. All right, let's get started. Tea. Okay, so I'm going to read the text as it is, then we're going to go back through it. Um, the first one, I'm just going to read the intro and the appreciating part. Let's, do we need to finish all the Oh yeah, let's say, see who's all on here, who's commenting right, this right. quickly. We're going to tease you guys, make you wait a little bit. You've probably read it a few times by now. So we got Ryan Smith. Hey, welcome, Ryan. He's got some Taiping Ho Kui uh, on my side here in Colorado in the States. Nice, oh, nice. Cool. Yeah, we were supposed to go to Denver back in June for World Tea Expo, but obviously that got kiboed. 
it didn't happen hopefully okay. next year hopefully next yeah. year I have never I'm thinking I've never been to Colorado so I'd love to go so thanks for joining us Ryan Cindy's got a lychee red tea uh, mm. for, for her today she doesn't usually drink tea with fruit essence oh it's actually an essence I thought you might be describing the flavor but yeah right. it's got some essence in it but decided the extra infusions would make good iced tea for a hot day mm. oh yeah should work two hours lychee later lychee is such mm. a summer mm. fruit two hours later in Argentina you were curious about that later so it's like a 11 I'm not sure I'm gonna check so tea here we go tea is the color and smell itself it also reflects a common and natural mood and appropriate life so I'll actually dive right in uh, I'll dive right in right away with that short section because I remember reading that and going uh, I was kind of going uh, <laughs> sort of uh, sort of loose a little confusing but I think the point here is just to get the spirit of it right and I think we do get the spirit of it mm. you know sort of like uh, I think uh, what it actually says in Chinese is more talking about uh, yeah tea can be uh, quite simple and basic like just the color of the liquor the leaf you see mm. and this aroma and the taste you have from it um, it can be that simple or you can kind of elevate it that to match your mood mm. to match the the moment kind yeah. of thing like wow. go both ways that's a thing. lot more than I think I would have got out of that just straight up I'm sort of just guessing at the spirit of it but mm. I didn't get that sort of uh, fluid the fluid aspect of tea that it can be elevated elevating or yeah that's good so all right I'm going to keep an eye on the questions, but we're gold right now. So appreciating as an expert. In summary, it is necessary to do three times in looking, smelling, tasting, and after tasting so that we can fully appreciate the tea. Okay, so um, once again here, right? Uh, it, seem, it seems okay, like I kind of think I got it, um, but three times looking, smelling, and tasting, and after tasting, uh, basically we got to do those things three times but does that make I'm just as curious if I say English in three times the looking smelling tasting does that mean three times looking and then you smell it or three times no, looking three times the smelling so that was what? the part I didn't quite get okay. when I first read it and even with all that we've been through and all the videos we've made about this I still kind of got this wrong after I read it. I thought it was you look and you look three times and you smell and you smell three times like in series and then you taste but oh. it's but once but the text does elaborate later so right, it will right. become clear. So this yeah. is just sort of like an intro. But and that three times does mean three times the looking, three times the smelling in, uh, respectively, right? You can just uh, say it in the front. You don't have to repeat that. Oh. Cuz in Chinese it repeats. It's very clear. You do three times the looking you do three times the smelling but in English just when I see that I was like does that mean only look three times then you smell once you taste once and after taste once no it's kind, does of, that make it's any kind of in brackets implied okay you know like okay. if you want to make it into math. just for my little English yeah, yeah, no that's totally fine you're allowed to ask questions too and by the way you guys can throw out questions too so mm -hmm. here we go so this is where we hit it I'm gonna read the three looking section okay <laughs> three looking three looking Firstly, look at the tea's appearance and color. While watching the tea's appearance, first check if it is dry. The high quality tea has less water. We can use our fingers to distinguish. If gently, pin if gently pinch the leaf and it is smashed, your skin also feel hurt. This is proved that it is well dried. On the contrary, if the tea is not easy to be smashed, it indicates that the tea has become damp. It tastes bad and doesn't have a strong fragrance. Secondly, look at the color. That is to see whether the tea soup is clear and bright and has got its own color. Tea soup's color will be different if the process is not the same. However, no matter what color it is, good tea soup must be clear and bright. The low quality tea, neither the soup is dark nor is it murky. Thirdly, look at the bottom of the leaf, namely looking at the leaf or the bud after being made and fully stretched. Good teas are tender and the leaves are thin and complete and no potpourri, burnt spots, red lines and red pedicle, etc. 
we can see green leaves with red edges on the T. Let me just see if it finishes here. On the T. I think that's okay, it. That's, my that's it. Okay, sorry about the unnecessary scroll. Okay, so that was a bit of a longer section. So let me dive in paragraph by paragraph. Honestly, para one. When I heard a uh, popery, I just uh, think of a poopery. <laughs> right. <laughs> I don't know, know if people poopery? know about that, but that's a hilarious little product. Um, anyway, let's not get into that here. So paragraph one. Too. Yes, yes, thank you. Is that Three times want? does it mean before steeping, during steeping, and after steeping? Yes, you're kind of getting at it, and mm. it's going to dive. We're going to get right into each one of those coming mm -hmm. up soon, Ryan. Great question. So it's a little bit of a, it's kind of just building anticipation, make us read the next section. So it's not too bad in terms of how it's translated. So here we go. So the first paragraph, firstly, look at the T's appearance and color. I think that's perfectly fine. Um, that's what we're going to do. Oh, just sorry, just a jump in because when they talk about three times the looking, smelling, in the English, you don't feel that. In Chinese, it can actually have a nice uh, rhyme of it. San kan, san wen, san ping, san hui wei. It has a little bit of poetic rhythm. Like, it's got rhythm, a rhythm to it. Rhythm and the rhyme in it. Mm, nice. It's Very a nice. kind of a cool. And right. it's a kind of a, like a, a, a it's professional a, way of saying things. Yeah, and to remember too, the little rhythm can help mm, you remember that. Absolutely. Yeah, that seems a little bit, um, I'm going to have to come up with a nice English rhyme to make that work now. All right. Is it not hard? <laughs> yeah, that'll be hard. That's, um, but I'm going to work on it. Okay. All right. So para one, pretty much okay. We're looking at the, uh, we've got to look at the appearance and the color. Paragraph two is pretty good. Um, it's the, the word hurt, right? So I'll jump right down to it. Mm -hmm. uh, when you gently pinch the leaf and it is smashed, your skin also feel hurt. Mm -hmm. It's a little extreme. We're not looking to actually, it's not a thorn, right? right. So that word did, was a little bit over translated or like it did, mm -hmm. they didn't hit the right word. It's more like you feel that prickly sensation as it right. breaks. It's resisting a little bit, right? Yes. You don't want it to just squeeze a little bit. Suddenly it's powder. No, that would be no, right. that's actually um, um, mm. uh, what you want. I think the first thing I want to uh, specify, specify. I mean, clarify is talking about dry. What would you think with the tea that are dry? So this is not in comparison with a fresh leaf. Oh, this is a fresh leaf and this is a dry leaf. Right. So it's talking about the degree of dryness. You know, uh, our like uh, you know fresh leaf. Assuming it's a hundred percent wet, just for the kind of a for the comparison. Of it. Yes. Yeah. And uh, the desired uh, dry leaves is not absolute no water. It still have like a two to six percent, different mm. depends on the tea. However, this one is more talking about is that twenty percent dry or is that right. like a ten percent dry? Right. Yes. In terms of the feeling, how to get that uh, mm. with your hands, and a lot of and uh, this is dry are talking about dry leaves. So when you look at say five teas, they all look like a dry leaf. Then what you do? to right. check as a dryness right. right and you want the leaves to be the the herd is not because of the leaf itself is resistance is the the like a prickly is when you crumble it is how dry it is it become powder while because mm. it's dry you feel like they almost have a little edge of it right you right. know you don't want that softness yeah in yeah it. yeah that's what sort of what i meant mm. but um what i was saying though was more that uh if you do like you still feel a, a good dry leaf. You still feel that uh, as it breaks apart. Yeah. It's not like a, like a tap and pff, like really, you know, but I guess I've never seen that in my life. Yeah, but. no, it wouldn't so be like that. You kind of, um, at some point, I think the, like a today's session, a lot of them are guidelines. Right. So you still need the experience to actually do it with every tea. Try a hundred teas, then you can see yes, the difference, yes, right? Yes, if we just point. describe that with words, it's kind of, oh, I seem to understand. Yeah. When you come to those teas, it's like, yeah. oh, they all feel the same. Yeah, I really think that point is going to come up again and again, because a lot of these instructions are really Absolutely. handy. But the question I would have as a beginner is, well, how do I know which is the right color? Because you, you got to do, you got to pay attention over time and it will all kind of come together. It's like anything worth doing, right? You've got to do that. Uh, you always need experience. You've got to do that, right? You cannot just learn everything from textbook, right? Okay, so the, the, <laughs> that's great. So the, um, the, sec the next paragraph, paragraph three, is look at the color to see if the tea soup is clear and bright and has its own color. And I think we should do three and four together because they're both related, right? 
that um, what's three and four paragraph three and four sorry so the oh should be paragraph uh, one two three four oh you're right you're right yeah, yeah. that's right that's just how I keep track of yes. them because there's so many so um, so it's just talking about the tea soup color again it's not it's not too bad it might make you wonder about it made me wonder a little about what about a trichrome a trichrome rich tea like like with lots of fuzz like by Hao Yun Jen and um, I think we talked a little bit about it in our last video because we mm. brewed we brewed a uh, moonlight white right mm, mm. Um, and that's a good thing to talk about here right again it comes back to experience but um, I, th I think you have a really good idea in terms of a sometimes a trichrome and stuff make people feel like this is a really cloudy tea mm. but uh, it's not necessarily uh, right because um, how should I say like a clear it has the implication of nothing in it right but that right. could be empty like oh, there is right. a difference between yep. that yep. and in what you want like the white teas or uh, green tea especially the butts green tea you want trichrome trichrome is yep. what make that worth the money right that's right so you want it but a trichrome with a proper process and stuff it doesn't make the liquor cloudy you that's will right. see beautiful trichrome floating evenly distributed in, in this the liquor, bright clear liquor while the right. liquor is bright and yep. radiant with that beautiful luster yep. so it doesn't necessarily and sometimes you could have a liquor that doesn't even have a trichrome but it looks cloudy mm. you know yes. like it's yes. not a correlation i was going to use an example sometimes we end up with because we have those powders from when we have to chop some tea with the with the saw mm. those powders it's not really mm. their fault but they render pretty cloudy liquor because right. they're just the, right. the so leaf dusting. is smashed. Yes, right. Because so, we drink fanning. Is that fanning? Do you call fannings, it? yeah. Fanning. It's pretty much fannings and dots. Yes. yes. Um, we don't want. It's still good tea though. We we'll just put that in tea bags, empty tea bags. That's we right. fill that in and we drink. But that. if we were appraising that, we mm. would say, mm, "This is pretty bad quality. The right. flavor is yeah. still decent, but the uh, the liquor is." Really and also, it's a general thing. While you, mm. if you look into poor, right, uh, shu poor, shen mm. poor, and stuff, it's not going to be very lustrous because of the process of it. However, well, as it ages, it starts mm. to have that radiance come yes. out and stuff. Yes. So it's really. Uh, no matter what tea we're talking about here, uh, how to do this, each tea has its own standard. Right. Green tea has the general guidance, but uh, how we appraise, say, Bu Luo Chun vis a vis uh, Longjing, there are mm. still different teas. Yep. yep. Right. Right. So down. So down to paragraph five there. So now we're looking at the bottom uh, of the leaf. So that was, again, it's pretty good. Um, what I like about this is it's basically saying, um, spread out the brood leaf, take a look at it. I always encourage you guys, play with your food, right? Pull it out, look at the leaf. Um, but it says bottom of the leaf, and that was confusing to me. And I think it just means, does that just mean the finished brood leaf? The brood leaf yeah. in Chinese. So it doesn't mean the underside of the no. leaf. It, for English, no. it would really make me think, turn the leaf over. But that's not what we're looking at here, right? right? It's the Chinese that says mm. that because this is a tea term, mm -hmm. we call that ye di. Ye di means brood leaves. Ah. So uh, if you don't know, the, the, if you're not a tea person knowing this, you would probably say a uh, bottom of the, which is yeah. a literal translation right. from that. So you speak Chinese, but you're not a tea person. Yeah. You're going to literally translate yeah. it bottom leaf, but it right. means brood leaf. Yeah. Good. Mm -hmm. Good. So yeah, yeah. So as I mentioned, yeah, definitely look at both sides and the rest of it's pretty good, right? You're looking for that um, uh, tender, uh, thin and complete uh, and not a bunch of unexpected stuff around in the leaf. Um, and you know, not burnt or uh, no red lines, etc. Mm. Oh, in the last sentence though, I didn't notice. Uh, that's kind of an interesting one because it says that you want red edges, which is again not a general truth, right? No. First, the translation is uh, uh, missing a part. It didn't say tea. It says a good oolong. Ah. And the second, it's a uh, more. Uh, how should I say, insider look when we look at oolong and old style. You know, the tea industry is always changing mm. and stuff. And uh, in uh, ever since the two, uh, late 90s and 2000, those green oolong uh, is 
starting from Tie Guan Yin is really taking the trend. Once upon a time, you know, all all time like decades ago when we talk what's a good uh, good uh, wulong, Lu Ye Hong Xiang Bian, that's a special tea term. Means uh, green mm. leaves with uh, outside red mm. edges, right? That's what the C uh, says here. Then in the two thousand, when the green、uh, green wulong was the trend, there even a、uh, extra process of smashing those leaves onto the walls to get rid of any、uh, edges, any like、uh, red edges, so the liquor and the leaves come out pure green.、Oh. But nowadays, it's、uh, slowly going. Out of trend because this step is really damaging for the tea. It really just for people who just getting into tea. Oh, is that green, an aroma provoking step? Not aroma,、oh. just the look and the liquor. Oh, green liquor, beautiful. Green leaves, beautiful.、Oh. It's really for people who just get into tea. Doesn't know much about tea. Doesn't right. Doesn't get much into the most feel around. It's just、uh, good looking. Right. So right. that sounds like again. It's because of that green tea. Popularity right in China. So、yeah. th- that I was going to say that there, there's a really fun article in Charan to learn more about this phenomena, where、um, in particular the articles about Tai Guan Yin, but as、mm. it busted, as it broke out among the po- main population in Chinese, it used to be super obscure. All those people know green tea, so they moved Tai Guan Yin towards that to increase its acceptance.、Mm-hmm. So check that out. We'll put a link down in the description to、mm. Char- Charan. It's the 2019 issue that has that.、Uh, Mm. An article about a town called Sikkim. Right. I also want to、uh, point out this、uh, green leaves with the red edges,、uh, as we mentioned in the、uh, the video we made a、uh, uh, like a six T type two dot O. I was talking about color and how color、uh, matters in terms of the tea. This green tea,、uh, green leaves doesn't mean bright green leaves. That's Ooh, not、yes. what we want. It's、right. just a saying, but in the right. Green shade again, depending on the particular tea and the particular tea type, etc. Yes, yes. Yeah, of course. Okay, great. And what have we got? I didn't look at the fl- at the pictures too much when I read it, but、uh, so here's just a couple of appearances. So dry leaves, dry and leaf. you have dry leaves, and you have the, you the dry leaf leaves here. Yeah, and, and if you go to、here. our website, every tea, that's how we follow this kind of a、mm. traditional Chinese tea appro- appraisal steps. We、yeah. always have. Dry leaf, a little bit close up, and always a liquor and brew leaf.、Yep. Every tea has a brew leaf. It's important to see. Yeah,、those. very important. So we.、Uh, right. Okay, I wanted to re- again. I wanted to read this one. This、right. is a.、Uh, this was an interesting one. This is in part that I did.、Um, it just says the courtesy of smelling the fragrance with holding the cup is breathing instead of expiring. After taking the cup away, you can expirate and talk. So I remember when we were、uh, we were in China, and you had taught me this long time before. But when we were there again, you kind of said, "Hey, when you taste, smell in, but hold that away and breathe out." It's a courtesy, yeah, you right? Your, yeah. You don't want to blow away all the aroma, right? And you don't want your breath and, over right, that, right? Because we do pass to people,、mm. you know, like several people sit at the table. We all. Have to smell that, right? So it's right. Like, and especially with、right. COVID now, everybody would be、mm. super careful. But, and you don't、yeah. want to like open the lid full. Yeah, just crack it and have a little it, smell. Smell it, pass、mm. to the next person. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I just thought that was funny. It reminded me of that time, and then I'm really careful about that. <laughs>、yes. All right. So the next section three smelling. All right, dry smelling. Smell the fragrance of the dry tea to distinguish if it has old taste, musty odor. Or absorbed an a, an a peculiar smell. Hot smelling. Hot smelling refers to the smell the f- to smell the fragrance after the tea is made. The high quality tea has a pure fragrance and heart stirring. If there is little or no fragrance or even a peculiar smell, it means that it is not good tea. Cold smelling. Cold smelling means to smell the, after the tea is cold. Then to smell the lid or bottom. At this time, you can just feel the fragrance instead of the tea's own flavor. Okay. So this is、um, so dry smelling is is dry leaf smelling.、Mm-hmm. Uh, pretty okay.、Um, this is again where I put a note that experience with tea, because I think it says、um, if it has old taste, musty odor, or a, a peculiar smell. You gotta have some experience with tea to pick up. Sometimes these quote-unquote peculiar smells are a little bit subtle. 
Yeah, and, and sometimes people think, oh, this tea, exactly. just have this because I'm trying a new tea or something. Uh -huh. But uh, across, no matter what tea, age, yeah, no right? matter what tea it is, when it has that, uh, uh, you know, old stale smell or any like musty, like moldy smell, they mm -hmm. are the same, yeah. no matter what tea it is. Yeah, yeah. And I also had a note, just more of a little add-on, not really a translation issue, but I've noticed personally that as we've done dry leaf when we're um, smelling tea or doing teas for the website, I noticed that um, high-end, like really high-quality teas are pretty greedy with dry leaf aroma. They're not, the dry leaf isn't giving me off too much. It's, it's kind of, it's almost like it's saving it for, for the infusion. Um, mm. That's just a little thing I've noticed that I wanted to share with you guys. But I don't yes. not really doesn't need to be in the book. Um, so in the hot smelling section, again, I found this whole section pretty okay. Mm -hmm. Heart stirring was a little bit like, huh? What do you mean by heart stirring? And what is a peculiar smell? And I think that comes back to the peculiar smell is an experience thing. Uh, so mm, smell. Right. Sm I think the peculiar smell is talking about because uh, tea leaves is really absorbing different. Uh, uh, flavors. Mm. That's why when we say how to store tea, we suggest a uh, odor free environment or seal seal well. Uh, and if you have old teas or teas you don't want to use, like uh, and feel bad to throw out, you can always uh, open that and put that in the fridge to help absorb uh, different odors. Oh, as use it like baking soda. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, like a replacement of baking soda. Mm. So what is a peculiar smell? Is uh, for example, I. Uh, say I put my tea in the room and I love incense mm. and gradually the tea will if not just sealed properly or stuff tea will kind of absorb that yeah so that would be pretty sure we had a tea like that yes once, right it was yes. really we're like what is that peculiar and slowly we're like that's an incense aroma because of this uh, yeah anyway so that that's uh, one of the good example to see those uh, the peculiar smell is more like a those smell that doesn't belong introduced. to the tea. Yeah, mm. it was introduced. They were from that it pick up, and and that's why tea can made it into jasmine. It's a sanded yeah, tea. That's, right. that's how they that's how pick it, up the uh, jasmine right? flavor or rose or whatever. Yeah. Okay, and in the cold smelling again, I think. This oh, wait, wait, wait! Oh, I'm oh, just wondering. Sorry. Did it mean what does no? What does a hard stirring mean? Right. Does no. that make sense in no. English? Is that like? Is that something I can learn? No, I think we improved that. Check out our translation after. You'll see how we how we dealt with that. But to me, I think it means more like um, pure fragrance and like uh, invigorating, I think was the word we chose. I think right? that's... Sort yes. of something like give you... It feels like energetic and eye-opening. Uh, relaxing and, and a really... Yeah. It's just working in the body kind of in a, Yeah, that more kind of, of in, a, in a feeling mode than a, mm. than a direct flavor and smell mode. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. All right, and then the cold smelling. I, I think this is, um, again, the translation is just okay. Um, I think an, as a newcomer, uh, somebody, they might, it might be more like, what does it mean smell the lid or bottom? It, need, it needs a little bit more to be clear, right? We're talking about smelling the gaiwan lid. The bottom, we call that the, this, like a leaf bottom is brewed leaves. Cup bottom is empty cup. So after you finish that and uh, this temperature already went down, the cold smell doesn't necessarily mean room temp, like a cold, cold smell. Mm. It's just a lower temperature smelling. Mm -hmm. Like when you finish, you can smell that. Uh, um, different temperature brings out different uh, aromatic elements. Yeah. So yeah. like this, now I'm smelling. I'm not empty. This so is like a question. sugary. Why is this so sweet for me? It is a sweet tea and has a lot of that. This is more, not syrup, not syrup sweet. This is fruity sweet, but like a really, what kind of oh, a fruit? Oh, you're right, tropical fruit. That kind of, it's an annoyingly sweet fruit, that kind of a sweet. <laughs> oh yeah, I get sort of a yeah, tropical. Almost like button. a little bit mango-ish. Yes, yeah. That kind of thing. Mango-y with a hint of apple, which might be why you find it annoying. <laughs> and unfortunately, we don't have a gaiwan lid this time, but mm. you'll, but do and take the time to smell the gaiwan lid. They're, they're right. like day and night, gaiwan lid versus bottom cup. This is a light aroma, too. Mm. And also the cold leaves. 
the kind of a room like lower temperature for mm. did you put that out I just passed you the lid. oh I, I forgot as I passed you the lid mm. I'm a little bit sloppy when it comes to brewing yeah I like to keep things clean that's why mm. I, <laughs> I do too I'm just not good at it <laughs> anyway so the this kind of a, a travel set the lid is always the kind of used as a the holder cap, yeah yeah so you can keep the things quite tidy and clean yes very unless good you for, have a husband like that get very good for tidy and clean but it will compromise your lid smelling experience mm. so but you can't have it all you gotta compromise sometimes on it. Yes. all right so maybe i can summarize a bit about uh, the dry smelling hot smelling and cold smelling mm, i think that's right good. i think that might make that more clear dry smelling means to smell the dry leaf Sometimes, uh, uh, sometimes you might notice we do warm it up uh, the guy one, put leaving and smell that. That's also count as a kind of a dry leaf. Mm. It helps. Mm. It's like a facilitate the aroma to become yeah, more prominent. Yeah, provokes it a little bit, right? Yeah. So hot smelling means smelling things when they're hot. Hot liquor, uh, hot leaves. So fresh brewed yes, or, or fresh like infused. A freshly poured in your cup mm -hmm. when it's hot to smell the leaves, mm -hmm. uh, smell the liquor. So that's a hot smell mm -hmm. and a cold smell doesn't necessarily mean cold it's just a way to say smell uh, different elements mm -hmm. when the temperature is low yeah right yeah and take the time to do that especially with your yeah. cup you can smell that hot and as it cools take some time to and see how the aroma changes absolutely and i think the more takeaway is not necess necessarily like it's so strict i do abc at right. this temperature that's i right. do uh, EFG at this temperature. Good, good if you point. don't like, uh, you don't, you forget about this or anything. Just to forget about all those uh, ways you are supposed to do. Just to smell that whenever you want smell. Absorb those informations. Absorb those uh, things, and not to mm. give that too much thought of what I should do. Right? Yeah, I you think just it's to smell the whole process. Yes. Everything. Leave. Yes. Liquor rather Cut. than rather than focusing on all the things you should or shouldn't be doing mm -hmm. just go with the flow and when you remember to smell it it'll stick in your brain more because you just had yeah, a feeling yeah. to hey i'm gonna smell that and you're not too worried about is my water like mm. you know don't worry about that being perfect mm. let your just get into the tea and that'll yeah. it'll come naturally i think yeah that, that's what i notice a lot of times is people are too focused on learning things and do things right and step by step but they forgot uh, to experience that mm. but um, I always suggest people when they want to learn more about tea is uh, forget about that you don't need to you don't even need to watch those uh, while we're sharing this knowledge or information or those mm -hmm. things taste and uh, smell and enrich your experience you know once you have a good enough data pool <laughs> right yeah. and when taste we, lots of different stuff yes and when we just uh, share a little bit of things as quickly you will be able to connect those thoughts but if you only know the the textbook knowledge mm -hmm. without experience no matter how much i explain it it will be hard to truly understand it yes mm -hmm. i totally i lived that right because at first i'm just absorbing information and steps and um, a lot of things didn't make sense and sometimes I just uh, sometimes you just got to say okay this doesn't make sense or uh, I didn't get it but just don't worry too much and mm. give it some time yeah tea is I a natural thing too. right it's a natural thing it's like a garden it's not a microwave oven you don't press the buttons and in one minute you get your result you gotta nurture it and do it and just ex like you said experience and enjoy it that's mm -hmm. what it's really for so before we dive into three tasting let's just see what the comments are there's plenty of uh, Plenty of stuff going, so I'm just gonna check. I think it's over here. Right, two hours later. Oh yeah, yeah. So Ryan says, by the three times, does it mean? Okay, we we covered that. So it's Kelsey. Hey, Kelsey, welcome. Oh my God, I seriously need to catch up on these videos. Feels like I missed weeks of lectures, college flashbacks. Okay, don't, <laughs> Kelsey, Kelsey, breathe in through the nose, out through the mouth. Everything's There's fine. No We're not in limit. college. There will be no exam. Okay, you're not gonna you're not gonna be examined on this. So, so just everything's fine, and they're all there. We're not gonna take them down. You can go catch up at your leisure. Brew some tea. No hurry. Okay, I just don't want to cause any stress. Right? I saw a capital O M G. <laughs> it's okay. It's gonna be all right. So Ryan says when I had Dayat Singh, it had cook cookieish. Yes, that's pretty good. A cookieish taste even. Yeah. 
sort of like if I I just made actually um, almond shortbreads. You often use that to describe this. Kind yes, of a, yes, but with no matcha, no no molasses. I put matcha and molasses in the latest yeah. batch are really good. Yeah. But it's more of the dry and maybe even less almond flour. More of that straight su sweet. Sweet. A, a that sweet. bakery. Su is like a like a, a texture of. Oops, sorry about the earthquake, everybody. Like that um, crumbly, delicious crumbly texture, mm. Mm. but sweet. Yeah. Thanks, Ryan. That's a great descriptor. Yeah. yeah, great descriptor. Obviously, it varies depending on sourcing. Yes, yes, for sure. Mm -hmm. All right, three tasting. Um, tasting is the fire skill. Okay, I don't know what that means, but I love it. All right, tasting, tasting the fire. <laughs> Yo, tasting the fire skill is to taste whether it is overburn, fit burn, or underburn or not. Tasting the flavor. The second tasting is about the flavors. At this point. You should let the tea soup run through your mouth and contact with your tongue sufficiently to feel that the taste is strong, fresh, sweet, rich, or bitter, light, and puckery. Tasting its charm. Yuan Mei, who was the great scholar in Qing Dynasty, had said that while drinking tea, you should slowly drink it and feel its special taste. This means keeping the soup in your mouth and slowly taste it. Feeling the smooth, feeling it smooth when the tea runs through your throat. Only if you are with a deep emotion will you appreciate good tea's fragrance, clear, sweet, lively, and its wonderful charm. Okay, let's back up a little bit. Um, tasting the fire. So, as a if I'm new to tea, right? This is a complete what? Like I don't know what you mean. Oh, I did a question mark. Oh, it didn't work. Sorry, you missed. No. <laughs> try it again. Try it again. Ah, it's because it's an object. Oh, oh baby, oh, you encourage my drawing, huh? Uh -huh. There we oh, go. Oh, good one. Good one. Good <laughs> one. <laughs> okay, so there we go. So, tasting like uh, tasting the fire skill. Mm -hmm. It's kind of confusing, and then this is hard. Yeah. So, but um, I think I will just explain what yeah. it is about. Um, so the uh, because it's a literal translation. So we call that 火工, which in a bigger, like in the rough term, you can even use that to describe the whole process. How is that process? Is that good? But mm. in the narrower uh, side, it can be quite specific, talking mm -hmm. about its drying, its roasting process. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you have that, uh, that uh, uh, the drying, the last step of drying went too much or like the fit burn means it's perfect, it's right. Fit burn, okay, yeah. Cause, <laughs> I cause don't know that, what that means. Because yeah, me neither. That was like, what is this? I, I had a notion, okay, this is something about roasting. This is tasting the roasting. Uh -huh. But I think it's, it's, um, it's, it was hard. It would have been really hard to get if you're not already into tea quite a bit. Right, because it's a tea terms. Mm. Right. Oh, and that's uh, why they're so twisted uh, in so, English. Like it's so weird burn. because mm. she doesn't quite know what um, you know, the writer means yeah. because she's not in tea. So, you know, like a different, you basically taste the drying thing. Yeah. Oh, one thing I want to talk about here about uh, the over, what is that over They say overburn. Here. But it means that it's dead too much because uh, mm. uh, the reason I want to talk about that is there is a kind of a, um, implication sometimes you talk to uh, people, they talk about, oh, this tea mm. takes uh, 40 hours to roast. This tea takes how many? Uh, to me, it doesn't mean anything. Mm -hmm. I need to taste the tea, then I know if your 40 yeah. hours is worth it or, or you wreck the tea. Right. Uh, the implication here is the longer time I take on the tea, the better it is. That is uh, straight up wrong. Yeah, it's, a, it's something that gets newbies in any field, whether it's mm. tea or sports or anything. Mm. There's often this thought that, oh, if it's a, such a slow roast, that must make it expensive because it takes time. Yes. But it, it actually just needs to be done right. It doesn't need to be done a yes. lot. Because uh, think about this. Once the tea got plucked off the tree, what's in it is in it. And we do taste uh, the flavor, the uh, the, uh, the flavor, the aroma, and the mouthfeel and everything, it comes from what's it already packed in it, mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. know? And there's a, uh, changes and stuff, it all happens here. 
if you just uh, say I rose the hell of it, it will eventually <laughs> consume what's already there. The goodness, it will yes. consume the goodness, yes. right? You want a sweet spot to eliminate what we don't want in tea. Right. Uh, enhance the aroma, mm -hmm. the flavor, but not everything. The longer the be uh, the better is yeah. wrong. And there's no strict uh, like oh, Tie Guan Yin needs uh, twelve hours of roasting. No. Uh, Feng Huang Dan Cong needs 20 hours. It depends. It depends on this batch itself. It depends on the process before. Yep, yep. Everything is very specific. Uh, yeah, it, just want to point out that no, it's, it's not really the longer the better. It's not something we need to, we don't need to worry about the details of, uh, this. yeah, so that's the takeaway. It's not the longer the better. And But as a tea drinker, I think the takeaway was exactly that. You don't need to worry about how long it was roasted. You need to taste it and see if it tastes like it was done properly. Yes, like right. uh, you take all the information and I always say no matter what tags or what comes with it, you take the information and don't let those information affect your take the tasting. Right, you right. know, it's just what right. you know, then you taste it and uh, you see do you yeah. like it and stuff like that. Yeah, all the information is right in there. It's okay to hear it and absorb it and put it in your little, yeah. in your bank, but it's all in here. Right, this is the cold now mm. for the leaves mm. it is so sugary right this is almost like icing like cookie icing what is that hard icing called um fondant almost like a fondant smell mm. Mm. really nice um, I wanted to say, I didn't mean, I don't want to shamelessly plug Cha Ren too much, but in terms of a good roasting article, there's another one in the 2019 uh, about Ping He that really goes into the roasting. Um, so that, that, I just wanted to throw that out. I'll put a link, again, it's the same link down in the description. Okay, so now let's jump into the flavor. So tasting the fire is tasting the drying, I guess mm -hmm. we could say. Or I, I hesitate to use the word roasting because it's so loaded. In English, you think of roasting a turkey or a ham. Um, the yeah, people were thinking about roasted tea, but every tea has a drying step. Yeah, that's more why dr yeah, I think dr drying is a better word. Better maybe. word, yeah. So let me make sure I didn't miss anything. Yeah, I got it. So flavor was, the tasting the flavor is uh, pretty good. Um, it describes, uh, again, it's a little bit broken in terms of the, you know, the grammar and the details, but you let the tea soup run through your mouth and contact your tongue. Um, that's pretty great and I wanted to again I'm just shamelessly promoting us like crazy but there's a great video we did a really good video no that is very important of yeah. how to taste how to taste which changed my whole perception of tea my whole ability to I do the writing for the website she gave me the detailed how to taste tea and I'm like this was so changing we got to make a video so we did make a video and I'll put the link to that down there mm -hmm. it's a lo it's quite long to go into every step here so yes. we got the video so go check that out and it might when you watch it you might think and I thought this when she first showed me I'm like this is really like a little bit excessive slow and boring um, but but just if you're a little bit skeptical uh, just punch your way through it even check the comments in the video you'll see other people have said that like it, it it's like boom it'll just blow your mind mm. how much more you get from your from your tea yes and how much you'll be able to tune into these nuances that we're starting to cover here in this chapter yes it's actually uh, I wanted to say in the English uh, it's uh, it just says uh, uh, contact with your tongue sufficiently, but in the in uh, in the Chinese version, it's very specific. The fr uh, the tip of your tongue, tip is the front right. Tip mm. of your tongue, the surface of the tongue, the side, and uh, the bottom, which is the, the end, the, the back. back of mm. the tongue. Right. This this all matters because as the, as the science also shows, the how we react with the different tastes is by different parts of the mm. tongue. Mm. You what this actually is saying is give tea time uh, a lot of times uh, some people say I don't know how to taste oh I don't have I just don't have the taste bud for those kind of things I, I can I tell you I'm one of those people right but it's not true you can learn yes if you want to learn and uh, step Sorry. one no, no no that's perfect because it for me it, I, I also have that transformation I don't mm. just uh, born and uh, love tea you know uh, I'm, little, I'm skeptical, but it's okay. Yeah, but um, 
What I mean is like you really have to give、mm. it a chance. If you ever sip, it just take one second and go down, and you. Uh, jump on to having a burger or having a pizza. Like <laughs> what I'm saying is, you really you don't have you don't give tea the time to display its aftertaste.、Yeah. Then of course you wouldn't know what aftertaste really means, right? Right. right? Yeah. So you need those times, and、uh, it was pretty.、Um, yeah, that's the one. Yeah, yeah just a, a little bit more about that.、Um, like if you just want to quench your thirst and have a beverage, I think tea is a great option. Absolutely. Just chug it. But、um, but for those of you into tasting, which I which is probably all of you watching, you're talking about the mo- one of the most complex chemically one of the most complex leaf and be- and liquors that's out there. You know we're we're beyond wine in terms of complexity, in terms of the amount of fun stuff that's happening. So there's a lot in there for you to enjoy.、Mm. Take the time; it's totally worth it. All right, and then the next one was taste its charm. This was really cute. Tasting its charm. First, I was like, for, I love that word choice because it's so cute. How charming is the tea? But、um, then when I got into it, I think this for me this felt like it's talking about sort of two things: mouth feel and、uh, tea, like、uh, the feel and the like those kind of things. Mouth feel, yun tea.、Um, that's kind of what I got out of it.、Mm. Uh, Yes and no. It、yeah. doesn't talk much about qi. Okay. It actually, the charm is a direct translation of the word、uh, yun. Sometimes people、oh. call that as a rhyme, but a rhyme means like what does rhyme mean in English?、Uh, run and fun. It doesn't mean、right. run and fun. It means words that sound、uh, the same. Right, right, right. Sounds right. the same. So that's、uh, in the po poem and stuff in songs、mm. and stuff,、mm. right? That's one of the feeling of the word ring, <laughs> but、uh, that's not the meaning in tea.、Mm. In tea means the,、uh, I like, I often use people to compare that. It's the air of the people, the air of the. Do you still say air? I learned that no, from yeah, English no, literature. No, I think air, air is probably a great translation. The It's air, old English, tea, right? Tea can have an air.、Um, yeah. I don't know. Let the let the viewers tell us if it's old.、Uh, for me, I'm pretty comfy with the word, like the、okay. air, the air or the feeling, like the feeling that、uh, you know how people have different.、Uh, you look at them, you feel、mm. something, that kind of thing. Yeah. And、uh, it's not. You can say, oh, it's、uh, it's so. It's not a real, or it's not an actual actual thing. But、right. you do feel that when it's people, right? We look、mm-hmm. at them, we start、mm-hmm. to feel, oh, this is a, this guy looks mean, or <laughs> or it you know? seems like a really solid character. Yeah, or a, yeah, a good yeah. Bloke or just, just we have that.、Mm. So that comes maybe from other elements that because we've seen so many people, we abstract、yeah. those elements.、Yeah. So that's the similarity with tea here is. You are going beyond the flavors or、mm-hmm. the sensation, the、right. mouth feel, the feeling, but、uh, going into a little bit of the depths of the tea.、Mm-hmm. And、uh, what the quoting of the、uh, schooler Yuan Mei just means again time, time, having the tea in your mouth, you know, give it time to、uh, demonstrate. And、uh, slowly swallow it because in Chinese tea tasting we care about throat yun, hou yun, the throat feeling. Some、mm. teas are prickly, some teas are really smooth, and you actually、mm-hmm. uh, consciously feel that moisturizing、right. feeling in、and、your、slick. throat. Sometimes they're slick. Yes. Like a, like, I don't want to say greasy, but、uh, lubricating.、Mm. You know.、Mm. And Ryan shot out. Did we mean aura? Maybe I'm just gonna. I saw that pop up, and、mm-hmm. that that exact word popped in my head as I was trying to describe air or aura, like、oh. the that that's sort of that invisible thing around a person. Right, right.、But、it's that kind of thing. Yeah. Yes. That's a good yes.、One. It's something tangible, but not as tangible as real thing. Yeah. Your the way one of the ways you described it that really resonates is sort of it's. It's that you make those conclusions based on your multitude of experiences. I really think those shouldn't be ignored. Of course,、mm. you have a bunch of life experiences. You see somebody, and you make that. It doesn't mean you're finished with the per- with that. Per-、mm-hmm. you, that's、mm-hmm. not how the person is. It's just、yes. your feeling. I think it's really good intuition, almost.、Mm-hmm. So it's like we do those comments a lot with people, right?、Uh, oh, you look tired, or、mm. oh, you look you're not so well today. What exactly? They don't look drastically different or stuff. Just right, a right. Little, little thing. Little the, subtle the, change. The, yeah. The light in the eyes or stuff like yeah, that. Yeah. Right. Cool. So,、um, 
Yeah, and I think that is a good time. Maybe we'll pop out and, and catch up on our comments. Cookie. Uh, so Chris, Ber Chris Bergen, hey, welcome Chris, if I didn't say hello already, um, says, this is a great thing you're doing. I'm having some unsmoked lapsang today. Mm. Oh, cool. We, yeah, we had that wow. a while ago, non-smoky yeah. lapsang. Very nice, very nice, and welcome. Igor, my buddy Igor, hey, welcome Igor. I come here to say hello and I'm leaving now. Sorry, but I enjoy all the chapters when I can. Thanks for the info. Okay, Igor is probably gone by now, but <laughs> check out. I gotta plug it. I gotta plug. We, we Igor helped me with a music project that I did. If you're into <laughs> if you're into crazy stuff, we did a, a oolong train based on Ozzy Osbourne's Crazy Train. It's a little bit hair metally 80s poppy. He's very proud of what he did. Uh, proud it, of what I'm not he did. That, and it, I am. It's, it's really um, cool. It's okay. fun. It was really fun. So if you're into tongue-in-cheek humor and fun, check out that. We do that. It's important to have fun, not just Absolutely. to be serious all the time. So I'm glad Igor popped in to say hello. And then aura, aura or quality, air is good too. In a feeling sense, totally usable. Yeah, so pretty, okay. not, it's not old English. It's still oh. in use. Because I pick up that word from reading... Uh, was her Pride and Prejudice, the, the writer? Right, right. She uses that a lot, oh, right, and right. I don't we hear much that. in people's like daily life right, here, so right. I thought it was old English or something. Cool. All Jim right. Austin. Oh, thank you. I uh, was just I was burning. Like, oh, who was that? All right, so last little section here. Three aftertaste. Okay, so we, we've gone through... Um, we've gone through three looking, three smelling, three tasting. Now we're three aftertaste. Mm-hmm. So I'll, I'll just say this before I start reading. I was really disappointed we didn't have the one, two, three breakdown here. So, um, oh, it's, it, it has it's, it. it's in there, but it's not paragraphed out. Anyway, here we go. Aftertaste refers to the feeling after you have drunk the tea. Having tasted the good tea, you will feel sweet among your mouth. And then this kind of fragrance will remain for several days. And at last, your throat will feel better. Your vigor and pulse will be open. The internal organs of the body seem to be moistened, which makes which make yourself feel relaxed and happy, just like the immortals. Okay, <laughs> right? This is um, um this is uh, this part is talking about qi. Yes, so you it's can see bit. that um from the but the, not three, all. the three parts were there. I think we captured them as um, mouth. I, I I saw them once I went digging for them mm -hmm. as mouth, throat, and organs which is a little bit of, of a rough translation. Um, it your, means you're, you feel um, your thirst is quenched, your insides feel good. Yeah, the first one is, uh, is a very like a, uh, not normal tea tasting, but like more uh, yeah. what we would understand is after you swallow the tea. So aftertaste means everything's done, you swallow your tea, the swallow is done, you clean palate, nothing in your mouth. So first is, um, do you feel the sweetness coming mm -hmm. back at the, it wouldn't have uh, like an overly real sugar sweet, but that sensation mm -hmm. of sweetness, mm -hmm. especially the back of the throat, back of the mouth, mm -hmm. beginning of the throat. That's right, yes, right? yeah, exactly. The end, uh, we call that uh, the bottom of the tongue. Mm -hmm. So have that sweetness and Saliva, it's the whole back salvation. of my mouth, too. the top back of my mouth, you everything starts yes, to watery. Yes, the salvation, you mm. really activated your gland kind of thing. That's very physical. Very physical, very mm -hmm. desired. But and days is kind of cute though. For several days you will have that. I think that's probably I don't not know what. translated like that. <laughs> I think that's a translation. It's a translation, it's the same. It, that would be a really good tip. I didn't, can I tell a story about yeah, that yeah. though? In Yunnan, when we were drinking the... Um, um, Bang, uh, Banjang? Banjang? What's the village we were in? I, I'm having we a... Pasha, no, 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 not Pasha. The before Pasha. Um, Zhanglang. Zhanglang, Zhanglang. Oh, sorry, I had a brain fart. We were drinking Puar for like uh, several, a long time mm. with, uh, with Yan Wen. And then we were later... Yan Wen Sing. Hmm? Yan, Yan, Yan Wen Sing. We went climbing up the mountain. It's been two years, okay? It's getting foggy. But when we went climbing up the and mountain... And he was sick at the moment, so... Yeah, I was actually um, just fighting something. But uh, literally a half hour, one hour, full hour later, I have my mouth still watering yes. with sweetness. So And when you, you know, breathe out, you still have, you still the have that. So it's a long time, but maybe days is too much. It's not days. <laughs> it wasn't days. It's just, just it was meaning to the, uh, the most of it till the end of the day. Which, of mm. course, assuming you're not eating anything, okay? If we have a banana that will take 
yeah. gone. Yeah, yeah. But it, or a pizza crust. That's an inside joke. It's an inside joke. <laughs> I still have a headache if I think about it. Anyways, uh, uh, so what it means is that uh, lingering power of the mouthfeel mm -hmm. of the aroma. That's the second aftertaste. The third one is what a lot of people often talk about is qi, cha qi. This is the cha qi. Is that uh, sometimes it's a literary sensation. Some people have that, like uh, the back really warms up. Some mm. people have more spine feelings. Some people Goose have bumps, that. Maybe. Yeah, or mm -hmm. uh, it could be just that relaxation. Like uh, it could be, you know, when you're very stressed out, you have a tea and uh, you really feel loose. The body feels loose and mm -hmm. comfy. Mm -hmm. That's another uh, display of that and uh, feeling really. Just overall, a really good sensation. Yeah. A feeling. It could be real physical, and it could be just the feeling. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, just something uh, like an internal sensation, or something that you feel sort of almost external, more like a goosebumps, or mm. even actual goosebumps. I remember mm -hmm. in uh, in Wu Yi tasting that Banyan Lao Tong Shui Xian. Instantly, I instantly had a. I held my arm up for Jen's mom, Jen Lee, and Jen to see all my all my arm hair was standing up. I got a goosebump from the back of my spine and pop out my arms and hit. Woo! It was really something though. And I used to feel, but then a long time ago when we had the Banyan Song Ping together, I was just getting started. You and your mom had really strong chatsi and I didn't feel anything. So there's not right and wrong, right? I was probably a little bit too new in my journey to feel it because there's a sensitivity aspect. Just like Absolutely. just like we were talking about that return suite, you might miss that if you're mm. new or if you're not paying attention. Um, so it's a it, it's sort of a, something you learn over time by do that and do that. And then yeah. I was really shocked the first time it happened to me because I really yeah. I had my opinion about it. It's a little bit woo -woo, and maybe it's just a fiction. The first time I got goosebumps from a tea. I was like, whoa, and yeah, and you also the Lao Tsong Shui Xian and Wu Yi, you didn't get that, right? Mm. But me and your mom got that. Mm, so mm. it's different. It's not just if you're sense uh, if you're sensitive enough. It's also just a personal thing. Mm. You may be sensitive to a tea and not another. It's not mm -hmm. like a context. And sometimes <laughs> it could be different times of a person, yeah, right? Sometimes right. we're more sensitive. Sometimes the, the the you know I didn't have a good sleep. I could be really dull. Right, right. You never know. It's a uh, it's something very interesting to explore and uh, it's uh, at some point one of the reasons why tea is often linked with uh, you know Buddhism and Taoism mm. with because those uh, religions are uh, religions are more connect like uh, they emphasize the body feelings and stuff mm -hmm. a lot they help too. you go inward mm -hmm. yeah 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 I wanted to say something but I forgot no worries. I just wanted to say something uh, that I so an afterthought so that kind of wraps up mm. our our section by section translation but as I read this and there was a few sections where we come up with this sort of feelings or these sort of I don't want to say less tangible because a lot of them are sensations that are no different than if somebody hold your hand and rub your hand you know that's a that's a sensation just like the throat feel you might get whether it's just whether it's, it's possible somebody touch your hand you're not paying attention and you don't notice it's similar like that but it's interesting to me how the the Chinese tea assessment doesn't put the feeling of the tea separate from the flavor of the tea but it, it's like a lot of times I feel like in Western culture we try to keep this, these things in their own buckets but where the, the, the Eastern or the Chinese approach is more unified. It's actually a part of the quality that shouldn't, can't and shouldn't be ignored. Mm -hmm. um, so I found that really interesting and this section started to touch on it. I suspect we're going to see that kind of as a recurring theme as we go through. Yeah, the yeah, absolutely. I think that's good to have a little recap. My feeling of a, a general uh, thing is uh, uh, like what we share here is the uh, general guide. And, uh, you know, it's great to, to follow those steps and we have videos of how to taste, we have videos to talk about more about the tea and a little bit deeper dive into leaves and different. But I think we should never let those uh, guidelines limit us. 
mm. uh, always like a, <laughs> the most important thing is just drink tea. Like mm. uh, you guys, right? If you have been eating bread all your life and suddenly you have a moldy or a stale bread, you know that's not fresh bread. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, you didn't never go to a bread school to learn those right. things. Right. Or if it's a little bit. A little bit, like maybe a not moldy, but just starting. You'd be like, off. "Ooh, this oh. is just starting the turn." You right? can know that, yeah, yes. or or just stale. It's not moldy yet. It's just dry, yes. and it should be. Yes, yes. Then you start to know that's mm. not like a lot of times. Uh, AKA, it's not magic. Yes, mm. it's not magic, and everybody can do that. The most important thing, beside learning, is actually the experience, mm. right? If you ask you to describe to me those bread. Bread, how is it good or bad? Well, yeah. I really taste bread. I, for me, there's no difference. Right, and even as somebody, she's picking bread because I, I'm a Westerner. I love bread and all. And I love rice because we, she's not oh, a big bread how, fan. How we taste rice, it's the same, right? How you taste bread, how we taste rice. We eat rice right. all our life. That's a good one. I the first that. thing, if you have a rice from last year, not the fresh rice from this year, you you have a. Uh, a bite and you I just never naturally that. know that yeah I never uh, thought that's why that. when my mom come to our place uh, and have the rice that's the first thing she said oh you got some stale rice right this is, <laughs> and I'm and I'm thinking she's magic but now that you give the bread metaphor I totally get it right like, and even more so if you tell me to if you're never had that and you say hey describe me how you told that was two day or one day old bread or how did you know that's old bread versus fresh bread I'm gonna struggle, even though I know it, putting it into words, okay, it's softer, it's squishier, but there's more too. There's some of those flavors have gone, if I really think about it now, which I've never done before. Right? It's sort of weird, but yes, so that's a really great metaphor. Yeah, and, and that's what we're trying to do, like uh, demystify, demystify. Mm. Oh, the, the rice the, one really the got me hard. Thing, right? I love that rice one, because I also, I wash the rice when we make rice at home. <laughs> And of several months ago now, it's been a while, but I'm a little bit, when we, okay, we got the rice cooker and it said, don't wash your rice for more than 10 minutes. It literally in the instructions said, don't wash for more than 10 minutes. Is anybody going to wash their rice for more than 10 minutes? I guess so. At any rate, it got me thinking, maybe I should wash this more thoroughly, not for 10 minutes, but make sure the water's clear when I'm done washing and then put the good water, then cook. So I didn't tell her I did that, but suddenly she's like, you, something about your rice, when you make the rice, it's way better than my rice. So I tell her, oh, I wash that really hard and make sure the water's good. So now I always, she give me that, wash the rice for a <laughs> But she noticed that, my point isn't any about okay. how great I am, it's how you notice on the flavor. Again, cause your rice savvy-ish, <laughs> yeah. right away you notice this is better rice than it was, mm. just from the how well it was pre-processed before mm. cooking which yeah, is something absolutely. so it's not magic it's just a matter of that's what you've been eating since you're a kid and you've had it a million different ways yeah mm. so there we go well that's great for today i think we yeah that wraps it up we had a delicious diet sing we're going to have a bunch of the links we talked about down below i'm going to say them out right now to review for myself cha ren is going to be down there the tasting video will be down there mm. we'll put a link to the tea we had today mm-hmm. Um, let's check out the comments before we sign off. Okay. Um, good air, air is totally. Uh, Josh, hey, Josh says, sorry I'm late. Don't worry, Josh. That's why we record them and post them on YouTube. And Cindy says, I really love these ideas on how to get even more enjoyment from drinking tea. Thanks. Yes, mm-hmm. you're more than welcome, Cindy. And everybody, that's exactly what it's for. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So, guys, if you, uh, I notice, I really appreciate the comments. I have to say, Cindy, yes. that comment, and everybody else who comment that they really love this series and are enjoying it, that's why we're doing it. Like, I was so excited when somebody shared that idea and it kind of became this because I really felt this is great stuff for people who love tea. Great content and great, un- sort of behind the curtain, deep dive into mm-hmm. the why and, and how of all of this tea stuff. So I, if I could ask you one thing, and it's not a big thing, but I know there's not a lot of, like if you're a tea lover, it's not all your friends who are tea lovers, but if right. you could share our, uh, our channel or our videos on social media and stuff, it would really mean a lot mm-hmm. to us. It would help other tea lovers who are that deep into it, mm-hmm. who find this interesting to find us. We'd really Absolutely. appreciate that. 
Uh, and of course, all the YouTube cliche stuff. Don't forget to subscribe. Probably you all already are. Hit that thumbs up if you like the video mm -hmm. and uh, the notification bell if you want to get a little ding ding when we start a live session or post a new video mm -hmm. about tea travel or uh, how to brew or how to taste or whatever it is we're posting. Um, thank you all for yes, joining thank us. Thank you so much. Until next time. Keep steeping. Keep steeping. Bye bye.